So let me welcome all of you to Union Station and a reminder that this is a uh, very significant day. Success that we've had here at Union Station and considering the success we've had on the north-south rail linkages and how well they've worked uh, by all objective standards uh, is reinforced by the announcement we have today. In a moment, I'm going to induce, uh, introduce our really fine governor, uh, Moore Healy, who's been terrific on these issues. And I'm reminded that, for me, it's now three governors that we've worked with on the north, south, east, west, but bringing this to fruition. Uh, governor Healy gets a special uh, pat on the back, as well as her staff. But this was a partnership, and I know Secretary Monica Tibbetts not is here. The Mass DOT Rail and Transit Administrator has been very helpful to us. Meredith Schlesinger is here. And Amtrak, uh, the Vice President Dennis Newman is here. And you know, the visit that I had with Amtrak when we traveled from South Station of Boston to Union Station in Springfield, I felt really confident because he kept taking pictures along the way and talking with us about what we all envisioned for East-West Rail. This is a huge economic boost for people who live in the valley, linking this to the city of Worcester and onto the city of Boston, and the governor has assured me once again she's fully in support of the argument that is going to proceed with making rail available to people in the Berkshires and Pittsfield, Massachusetts as well. So this is $108 million of federal funding from the Department of Transportation. I know at a time when we're so focused on amplifying conflict in social media and the cable shows, that there are some of us who are really interested in governance. And I call attention to that uh, largely because of the success that we had in getting Joe Biden's infrastructure bill over the gold line. And the tax credits in that came from the Ways and Means Committee. So then let's go to the Inflation Reduction Act. $412 billion of tax credits is singularly the most important piece of climate change legislation in the history of the world. Tax credits came from the Ways and Means Committee. The CHIPS Act, all of this has happened during the last two and a half years, and the infrastructure bill helped to reinforce additional funding for what we're witnessing here on East-West Rail. So much of my constituency over the years was centered around the city of Worcester. This district at one time went to Bellingham. And I began in Lemonster, Fitchburg, and Gardner. So I have a very good understanding of what the people of Worcester, south and north, think of what they need in terms of economic opportunity. This will also relieve in time some of the housing pressures in the city of Boston. Because you can live out here in a beautiful and big home for just part of the cost of what people pay in the city of Boston. So this is significant. We would not have gotten here without the assertive leadership of Governor Maura Healy. She's been terrific. I noticed she was at the Big E. Did you get enough cotton candy? Never. Uh, I mean, it's a must there. And, uh, but uh, Governor Healy's work here as an advocate, she's out here all the time. You know, when I talk to her, there's always follow-up. Always follow-up. And that's the school that I came from. Follow-up. So we're delighted that the governor is with us once again, and this is an exciting announcement in partnership with the federal government. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce my friend, Governor Moore here. Good morning. Good morning, and always great to be in the 413, uh, two days in a row. Excellent. Um, but uh, no maple creams this morning. Uh, but we do have great things to talk about, and I just want to thank Chairman Neal for his leadership on so many fronts in bringing real money back to Massachusetts that has a huge transformational impact on communities, not just here in his district, but statewide. And uh, I'm just so, uh, not only proud, but, but grateful, uh, particularly in my shoes, to have a person who is just a top leader in all of Congress, advocating for us, working for us, working with us day after day. I was delighted when we got the call from your office about the opportunity, not only to be here at Union Station, but to celebrate this moment and what it represents. Um, delighted to be alongside uh, Mayor Sarno. Uh, great to see you. and. 
our colleagues in government, Representative Sabadosa, Senator Oliveira, Representative Gonzalez, joined as well by members of our team. So I don't get the credit on this one. It's the folks in the administration, particularly our Department of Transportation. You'll hear from our Secretary of DOT, Monica Tibbetts-Nutt, our Rail and Transit Administrator, Meredith Schlesinger. Meredith, in particular, has been uh, really the force behind what became the application that we're grateful that the administration chose to fund. And we also have with us today our Director of Federal Funds and Infrastructure, Quentin Palfrey. Um, grateful to the entire team who worked on this. And great to stand alongside Dennis Newman, our Amtrak Executive VP, of course. We also want to thank the Federal Rail Administration, CZX, uh, the Grafton and Upton Railroad, and the MBTA for their continued partnership in our rail system. Um, I also want to note uh, our Rural Affairs Director, Senator, you know her as Senator Ann Govey, okay? But, you know, we stole her from the legislature. She's now working for us uh, with a particular eye on rural affairs and economic development and growth. But given her knowledge, you know, um, she pays particular attention uh, to, to Western and, and Central Massachusetts. Look, we said from day one that we were going to compete. As an administration, we were going to compete hard for every single dollar that the Biden-Harris administration has made available through the important legislation enacted by Congress under Congressman Neal's leadership and with the support of our entire federal delegation. We have outstanding representation in Congress. Uh, we put together on our end an outstanding uh, state team, the Office of Federal Funds and Infrastructure, uh, working with all of our agencies across state government. We brought in regional, local, and private sector partners to join in this effort, and this is about Team Massachusetts. I've said from the beginning, Team Massachusetts, we want to fire on all cylinders, and this today is an example of the kind of result we can deliver. A $108 million grant, it's going to boost the passenger rail service, of course, uh, all across Massachusetts and across the region. Um, I'm so excited about what this means. And, you know, I just can't overstate the importance of this. Yes, access to jobs, access to housing, economic growth and development, which will go hand in hand with the important investments we've made recently through our own state budget process, investments in workforce programs, free community college, housing investments. But transportation, we know, is a critical component to unlocking growth, to unlocking talent, uh, to unlocking opportunity. And it's super exciting what this means. I have been, from the beginning, a longtime proponent and supporter of East-West Rail. We want to fully connect our communities. This is something that we will continue to fight hard for, build the foundation and building blocks towards. This is a huge step forward today, a huge investment. And we are going to continue to make these investments in Western Massachusetts big time. Um, so, we look forward to more, uh, more work, and again, I just want to thank Congressman Neal, the delegation. I want to thank my team, um, in particular, for the work they did to hustle and put together this grant application, and I am super excited about what this means. And with that, I want to introduce our Secretary of Transportation, Monica Tibbetts-Nutt. Good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to be in this gorgeous station. When my team walked in this morning, we, the first thing we noticed, I was like, this has to be the cleanest station I've ever been in. And you continue to walk in, and it's just like, wow. So thank you, Congressman, for having us today. Thank you, Mayor. This is, this is a really fantastic announcement, not just for the Department of Transportation, not just for the Commonwealth, but for this entire region. I want to thank Congressman Neal. I want to thank the governor. I'd love to thank Meredith Schlesinger, Vice President Dennis Newman. We couldn't have done any of this without all of your effort. This has been going on for well over a year, putting together this application, having our delegation push so hard, having Amtrak work so closely with us. I also want to express our deep appreciation to USDOT to the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, and all the officials in federal transfer in the federal administration. Boston may be the hub, but
but Springfield and Springfield Union Station is certainly the Compass Rose. Massachusetts lines stretching north, south, east, west are not just going to unlock the region for the residents of Boston, but really unlock the region for those who've moved out here, those who've been able to work out here. When we talk about the housing crisis, we all know there are no easy answers, but I will say central and western Massachusetts have answered the call. They've made it to where families, independent of what income you're in, are able to actually own homes and for businesses, small businesses, to be able to locate out here and get the workforce that they need. The Chrissy Grant funding today is totally more than $108 million. This is going to be spent wisely. This is going to go towards support or infrastructure projects. This is all planned under our Connecting the Commonwealth early actions for the Inland Route project. The project is anticipated to divert 15 million passenger miles annually from other modes of rail. This is representing a notable shift to more environmentally friendly movement. The Inland Route Service will also introduce an opportunity not only to advance accessible, affordable housing, but to also provide those connections to jobs for a diverse group of Massachusetts residents. The service will not only provide improved connections between Boston and Springfield, but it will also improve direct connections from central Massachusetts to Connecticut and improve connectivity all the way up through the Pioneer Valley. Inner city passenger rail service has become an increasingly important part of our transportation system. Last state fiscal year, we served over 170,000 trips in Western Massachusetts on state supported Amtrak services. The highest number of trips ever and well over the pre-pandemic levels. The Chrissy Grant federal funds will support the rail capacity necessary for two additional round trips from Boston to Springfield as well as providing improved connections between many cities in southern New England, Boston, Framingham, Worcester, Springfield, Hartford, and New Haven. The train travel times between Boston and Springfield will be reduced from the existing Lakeshore Limited to get closer to a two-hour trip time for passengers between Boston and Springfield. The improvements will support our important freight rail network by building capacity and supporting efficient operations of CSX and Grafton and Upton railroads. The used freight rail line and its criticality to the economy carrying important regional commodities, consumer products, and many of our community waste products. However, as you all know, this is incredibly complicated and it is challenging to start passenger train service. And we are so thankful to have our good partners in Amtrak, in CSX, MBTA Grafton and Upton Railroad, and the state of Connecticut, and especially the Federal Railroad Administration. I cannot say enough for all the work this team has put into this. And all of us at MassDOT are thrilled, beyond thrilled, to be working with you in the weeks, the months, and years ahead as we improve and expand our passenger rail within Western Massachusetts. At this time, it is my true honor, true honor, to present our Rail and Transit Administrator, Meredith Schlesinger. Thank you, Secretary. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to be here for this announcement, particularly to share the podium with Governor Haley and Congressman Neal who have been such vocal champions for expanding passenger rail service across the state. And to be with so many of you who have been tireless advocates for transportation services that help people who live, work, and visit this region. Winning this Chrissy Grant is very satisfying because we have done this together with Amtrak and CSX. And to demonstrate our commitment and their commitment, we even started working on the technical analysis for these projects well before we learned about the grant announcement yesterday. We have all been closely collaborating for years to increase passenger rail service in the Commonwealth. And together, we have made a big difference, making the Valley Flyer service permanent and piloting the Berkshire Flyer are just two examples. With this grant, we can deliver even more. It is an honor to work with so many people who understand the important role rail plays in giving people mobility options, improving quality of life, spurring economic growth, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. In particular, it's been a pleasure to work with Governor Healy and her team to prioritize passenger rail needs and to get assistance with federal funding applications. 
From the start, the Healy Driscoll administration has been committed to West East Rail. The administration initially proposed using fair share funds for the Palmer and Pittsfield components, but when these funds weren't included in the legislature's budget proposals, the administration took action to include $12 million in MassDOT's capital plan. So this work is currently funded. In addition to supporting this Chrissy application, the administration encouraged us to go after other funding opportunities. Two applications are still pending for service planning funds from the Federal Railroad Administration's Corridor ID program for the Boston to Albany corridor and the inland route between Boston, Springfield, and New Haven. The Corridor ID program selections will determine eligibility for future FRA funding. So we have a really bright future ahead as we build on our, build on our recent successes and lay the foundational elements to expand passenger rail service. As Rail and Transit Administrator for the Commonwealth, I want to express my deep appreciation for all of you, for your very, all, your, all of your efforts to get us funding for our rail needs, and for your enthusiasm in helping us improve transportation options across the Commonwealth. I especially want to thank the MassDOT Rail team, John Weston's here, Andy Koziel's here, who go above and beyond each day to advance this work. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, thank you, Meredith. I'm Dennis Newman um, from Amtrak, and it is great to be here at the beautiful Springfield Union Station. Um, my first time back here since we added two additional Northeast Regional round trips earlier this summer in collaboration with MassDOT and Connecticut DOT and Metro North Railroad. So first off, I want to start my list of thank yous. Um, so thank you to, to Congressman Neal, who's been a strong and tireless champion of passenger rail over the years. Governor Healy, Acting Secretary Tibbetts Nutt, uh, Mascot Rail Administrator Meredith Schlesinger, whom you just heard from, uh, Mayor Sarno, the U.S. Department of Transportation, and all the other public officials who've worked so hard to bring more Amtrak service to Massachusetts. Now, at Amtrak, we're delivering a new era of passenger rail as we invest in our existing assets and plan for future growth. We're thrilled with today's grant announcement that will not only support higher speeds and prepare for more Amtrak service, but also better accommodate freight rail service in the area. This grant will allow us to restore inland service, inland route service, and operate two additional round trips between Boston and Springfield. This is one of the first steps in delivering on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act's vision of expanded and enhanced passenger rail. And this grant illustrates what is possible with significant funding for a more modern intercity rail system. We'd like to commend CSX for their engagement and cooperation, collaboration on this project, and we're excited to continue to partner with them to deliver improved passenger rail service in Massachusetts. We hope that this is the first of many grant awards that will help us expand our system create economic development and mobility opportunities for local communities, and address climate change. This is an exciting time for the Commonwealth and for Amtrak, and we look forward to continue working with everyone here to enhance and expand Amtrak service both in the Northeast, along the entire Northeast Corridor, and throughout the nation. So thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Neal and to Governor Healy and her administration and to my colleagues in government. Welcome to the house that Neal built. The tracks are being laid right now. And when you look upon settlements that occurred back in the 1600s and 1700s, it was the river. And then when you move toward where the industrial age, it was the railroad that made for the boom cities. So it's back to the future now. This $108 million sets the stage from Worcester to Springfield. And this is another project, and I have to commend Congressman Neal. I want to commend Governor Healy. Synergy. We're all working together to make this happen. 
Another project that said would never get done in the city of Springfield. And we worked very closely together, and now you have this. And Governor, I have to tell you, the station is always very, very meticulously kept, and I, I want to commend my SRA uh, director, Amanda Farm, on that also, too. So, this is to the Golden West, as Congressman Neal had alluded to. Our price points are much, much better than in the Boston area when it comes to uh, housing, business economic development, opportunities, and to have this rail east-west come to fruition and being able to move back and forth within a, re a reasonable amount of time that's that's key that's key so we're ready to roll and i can't wait until we're all here with congressman neal and governor healy my colleagues in government the administration and to say all aboard let's keep it rolling thanks Uh, I do want to thank Eddie Mark and Elizabeth Warren. They were very supportive of my position on this. And I also want to thank the uh, legislators that are here because they've been very helpful on the, the state side as well. The last point I'm going to make, I'm going to be with Governor Lamont in about an hour, an hour and a half in, in Hartford. And three governors of Connecticut have said to me repeatedly, can you work on the Inland Group? Of course, I said, yeah, after we do the North South here. And, uh, but this is a collaborative effort between Connecticut and Massachusetts as well. And if we share that airport, which is really important uh, for economic purposes as well as transportation, but I think this also highlights the relationship that we have with uh, Governor Lamont and the Connecticut legislative delegation. So, questions? What's the uh, time frame? Or what did I hear from the, the secretary and from the real administrator? I know we're going to get around to the government shutdown and we'll do all the other things. I do not want to speak to the government shutdown. Um, so we are doing some technical analysis now um, and we will have a better sense of the time frame for construction. CSX is the right of way owner, so it is, they get final say exactly about the timeline, but this is a, most rails projects are, it'll be several years to you know, implement, the, implement the construction improvements and um, start the new service. Well, as you know, and, and again, I want to thank the legislature for their investments um, and for the work of our team in making sure that we have funding for stations, important stations, including Pittsfield. You know, everything is connected in this, and all of us, we're all in, in making these component parts Bit, uh, match up and it's really it was really important to me that we have staffing we're currently in the process of hiring that director of West East Rail in addition to staff as you know I sought and received six hundred fifty thousand dollars so that we are going to be very shortly all staffed up uh, ready to implement ready to work with our partners on realizing what is an incredible economic opportunity for the state and the region Yeah, in terms of the, the inland rail service, the, the additional two trains. Um, so yeah, so they would, uh, these would be trains, and, and of course I'll, I'll defer to uh, to the best rail administrator, but, um, but they would run from Boston to Springfield and then continue down the Hartford line um, and then be able to continue on to New York City. We've so. heard what the impact would be in terms of additional round of trips, higher speeds. Can somebody, maybe from the NCOT, just talk about briefly exactly what the money will be spent on? Um, yeah, so um, we're doing, we're finding the technical analysis now, but we're talking about um, adding, you know, sidings, additional track, um, and other raising the track class so we can go at higher speeds from what's there now to 80 miles an hour. So we're doing some analysis to, exact, to figure out exactly where and, and what components um, will maximize the benefit that we're trying to, to achieve, which is that roughly two hour travel time between Boston and Springfield. So that technical work is underway. Governor Healy, 
Um, everybody here has spoken about the uh, ability for people coming from Boston to have lower prices for housing up here. What would you say to people who are already being priced out of the housing here now? And, and I want to be clear, you know, this, this isn't meant or suggested as a solution for Boston, okay? This initiative, these investments are about creating economic opportunity, furthering economic development for Western Massachusetts and the region. I want to be clear about that. And you've seen that commitment in the investments that this administration has made. Second, on housing. I said from the beginning, housing is a top priority. It's why I created for the first time a Secretary of Housing, and he and his team are getting after it in terms of increasing production. I know people can't afford rent. They can't afford down payments. People can't afford to downsize in some areas, okay? So part of our growth as a state, you know, our destiny is tied to one another. That's why we're pushing communities across the state for help in zoning changes, how do we incent development, how do we work in public-private partnership, how do we work with local teams on the kind of development that's going to bring about success and opportunity. If we can't house people, people cannot live and work here. I love Massachusetts. I love your visiting my friend Governor Lamont. Give him my regards. But we are the greatest state in the country. We just got to make it more affordable, more equitable, and we got the team here collectively, I know, to make that happen. Last question. Governor Healy, uh, just a quick question. This is from one of our affiliates in Boston. I wonder if you had a response to MBTA uh, stalling the stalling contract potential further notice after there were a couple of incidents where workers were almost hit by trains. You know what? You're nice to do their work for them and ask the question. <laughs> um, look. We take all of this very, very seriously. We've been meeting regularly on this. We're going to get the resources in place. Um, any near miss is unacceptable to me. GM Ang has come in. He's made changes. He's continuing to make changes. We've increased staffing and hiring there. We're going to get the resources in place. I met with the FTA administrator this week personally, and so we are on it and working on that every single day. It is something I take uh, incredibly uh, seriously. There is nothing more important than the safety and the well-being of both passengers and workers on all public transit. Thank, Thank you. you.